Hello, and thank you so much for coming by the channel today. I really appreciate it. My name is Susan, and this channel is Road Reads. And we're going to do a reading check-in today because I haven't done one for the entire month of January. But we're so late in January. Today, the day I'm filming this, it's January 27th. This will probably go up on my channel tomorrow. It's almost like a January reading wrap-up. <laughs> So um, let's just get right to it. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these. The first book I read, I, I hopped on the bandwagon, um, Sarah at Hardcover Hearts. She reads 84 Churn Cross Road every year by Helene Hanf. I've talked about this book ad nauseum on my channel, so I won't go back into it. I just will say I think it's the best idea to start your new year reading this book written by a book lover and it's just it's so heartwarming and life affirming for us bookish type people that I, I I agree with Sarah. I think this is such a great read to do on January 1st. It's short. You can read it in an hour or two. And yet it's so powerful. It has such a punch in it. And I, I just love it. This is my second time reading it. I loved it even more than the first time, which is hard to believe. And I, I think I'm going to continue her tradition. I think that's that's a great way to start the new year. So that was my first read. So off the high of 84 Charing Cross Road was a huge disappointment for me. I read Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities. So this was a reread for me, but I hadn't read it since I was a child. I don't know, I was junior high or early high school that I had to read A Tale of Two Cities. And at least in my mind all these years, I remembered loving this. And as you know, I'm a fan of the Dickens I've read so far. I absolutely loved Bleak House, five stars. It was so good, took me a while to get into, but I ended up being so invested in those characters and so invested in that plot that Bleak House was such a complete reading success for me. And then last year, David Copperfield was my number one read of the entire year. And honestly, it was because I was so invested in those characters. There were so many characters I literally loved and wanted, I, I, I just, wanted everything to be okay for them, that I just was on pins and needles through David Copperfield and loved it so much. It was such a great reading experience for me. But with this, with A Tale of Two Cities, it was the opposite. I did not feel, if there was character development in here by Dickens, it, it didn't reach me. It didn't get through my little reading heart and just, you know, press all the buttons. I didn't care about the characters. I didn't feel like he made me care about them. You know, that we're talking a tale of two cities. We're talking Paris and London. We're talking French Revolution. And and some two of the most probably famous passages in Western literature are in this book at the beginning and the end. And yet, and yet I made myself read this book. I made myself get to the end. I so wanted to just stop reading because it was it was hindering my reading in general because I didn't want to go back to it. I mean, I remember like the first really uh, what should have been a, a meaningful speech that one of our characters gives maybe at the end of the first third of this book. We finally get one of those speeches and I felt nothing. And I thought, I said to myself at the time, Susan, you should be so excited that this speech is happening and yet you're not because Dickens hasn't done anything to make you care about this character yet. So it was a fail for me and I just wasn't expecting that. I almost thought, is my favorite Dickens book going to be the most recent Dickens book I read? Because I loved Bleak House so much, but if I had to um, say which I preferred, I would have said probably David Copperfield. And so Tale of Two Cities, this is a lot of people's favorite Dickens books. So do not let me discourage you. I mean, people love this book. They're bored to death with David Copperfield, didn't feel an attachment to those characters. And yet for me, it was such the opposite experience. So take what I say with a grain of salt. But this, unfortunately, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. The next book I read was, I wanted a, a home run after the disappointment of, of A Tale of Two Cities. And so from my library, I got the audiobook of the fourth book in the Thursday Murder Club series, uh, The Last Devil to Die. Delightful. Now, of the four so far, 
This one had the most um, sad moment in it, um, prolonged moment, I should say. But I just find these books delightful and heartwarming. And I just think he is so in tune with the tone of these books. And the tone of these books are for me because like I said, they're poignant and yet they're funny. It's just such a good balance. And then of course you have the mystery of it. And there, it's always a multi-layered mystery in, in th this series. So there's more than one thing that you are finding out about. So that, that just adds to it. And I do want to share this. It's not a spoiler because it's from the author himself. If you are invested in this series like I am, he did say at the end of the third book, which I also listened to mostly on audio, I think it was a combination. He, there, there was an interview with him as there was an interview with him at the end of this fourth book. And he did say he has no plans on killing off one of our four main characters. And again, not a spoiler because he's telling us that. And I know he likes to, he likes to put the little, you know, the little dagger into our hearts sometimes and twist it. And he definitely does in this last book so far in the series. Um, but he has no plans to kill off one of our main four. So for that, I am thankful and I hope he keeps to his, you know, current path because I can't take that. <laughs> okay, the next book I read, it was actually a short story and it was uh, mentioned by one of you in the comments. Um, I feel like, am I the only one? I feel like Edith Wharton is everywhere. Not just here on our little corner of booktube because I feel like so many of us are talking about her lately, but like in unexpected places in the world, I'm hearing about Edith Wharton and I'm like, what's going on? But then, you know, maybe because she's been on my mind, maybe I'm just more in tune uh, when I hear about her. But I feel like I've been seeing her from all angles of my life. But anyway, one of you mentioned reading her short story, The Reckoning. So this came out early 1900s. I think 1902 it was published. And um, the person who left the comment saying they had just read it also mentioned it was about marriage. Well, just sign me up. I'm on board. I I'm obsessed with the marriage plot, which is funny because um, it, in the next book I read, the marriage plot as a plot is part of the plot. But anyway, um, so The Reckoning, written in, you know, early 1900s. And yet for me, it felt so fresh. So our main character, she's married and it's her second marriage. She's not a widow. She divorced her first husband. She left her first husband and got divorced at a time that this was, this, this was unusual. And the way Wharton talks about that and examines the leaving and the divorce from the first marriage and then the ramifications of that in her second marriage for a short story from the early 1900s about marriage i was so into it so i went and got my um my edith wharton <laughs> biography from hermione lee and started reading all the passages that talk about the reckoning so i could see what wharton thought if you're into wharton and you like short stories read the reckoning i got it from my library uh, via the libby app in a book i think it was called edith wharton short stories volume two so maybe check to see if your library also has that so i just read it on my kindle i loved it i gave it four stars then the next book the book i said had talks about the marriage plot as a plot <laughs> maybe not as favorably as i think of it but the next book I read was Michael Cunningham's latest release, Day. I believe it came out, was it late last year? So let me say this about Day. It is literary fiction. So if you don't like literary fiction, I don't think you're going to like Day. Uh, I love literary fiction. I loved it. And it also has to do with COVID. It's Part of it is set during the height of COVID. But it's not, while it is major to the story, it's not pervasive. I don't, I don't even remember, was the word COVID even used in it? Here's what Michael Cunningham said. He said, he wanted a novel that concerns the pandemic, but isn't about the pandemic. And I think 
he hit the nail on the head. He did such a good job at that. If you liked the hours, oh my gosh, run, don't walk to get day. It's so beautifully written. I did read reviews on Goodreads that um, weren't quite as favorable toward the book as what I feel of toward the book. And, you know, some of them were like, is anyone really inside their head enough to have these conversations with themselves about blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yes, yes, they are. <laughs> So this, this book was completely for me. It's about family and about marriage and, and about loss and change. I, I just, I loved it. I loved The Hours by Michael Cunningham, which came out, what, decades ago. And to me, this just felt like the same author. It is the same author. But you, even though I haven't read Michael Cunningham's other books, but Day felt very Michael Cunningham to me. Uh, there's a lot about the inner thought process of these main characters. And it's a small cast of characters in this book. We're with them the entire time. And it's an interesting st structure. Um, it, it's different points in time. So it's the same day, I believe, April 5th? Yes, okay, so it's April 5th in the morning of 2019. In the afternoon of 2020, you know, when we're at the height of COVID, and then in the evening of 2021, when, when things have calmed down a bit with the pandemic, a bit, I should say. I just had COVID last week for the first time. <laughs> so uh, it's it's still out there. And um, and it, it hit me like a head cold. In fact, if I sound a little weird in today's video, that's why. But like my body felt fine the entire time. It was just all in here with like, you know, the nasal passage and all of that fun stuff. But I was still exercising. I was still moving about and taking care of things here at the house as normal. If you if you think to yourself, I don't want to be, read a book about the pandemic. I get that. I do. Uh, but to me, like he did it in the best way. But if you don't like literary fiction, I think this book will drive you crazy. <laughs> it's not a long book, but um, beautiful. It's just beautiful. <laughs> Five stars. Okay, and then the last book I read, wow, this, this month was kind of highs and lows. This was another huge disappointment. So I got this as an ARC from Nat Galley. It's one of my favorite contemporary writers, and that's Sally Hepworth. I have read, I don't know, I want to say four or five Sally Hepworth books, and have enjoyed and or loved every one of them. Until the one that's going to be released here in the US in April, and it's Darling Girls by Sally Hepworth. So this book is about three sisters, but they're not biological sisters, but you'll understand why they do consider themselves as sisters. And they lived within the foster care system of um, of a single woman in a big old house. And it, it talks about that experience for them and what that was like. And then it, they are all notified by the police that, that human remains have been found under this house. And so we go back from their childhoods in the foster care system together and back and forth and bet between that and current time and the relationship with each other. Um, it did not work for me. Um, what I usually love about Sally Hapworth's books is they seem special. Because I read a lot of mystery thrillers, contemporary mystery thrillers. This felt like it could have been written by anyone. Um, it didn't have her charm and her humor that her books for me normally do. And it didn't have the depth of character that her books normally do. Let, so that's my opinion. Other people have loved this book. It's their favorite Hepworth book. So if you are a Hepworth fan, I do not want to turn you off. I'm just saying I was shocked. I, didn't, I would have DNF'd it if it wasn't a Sally Hepworth book. And I almost did DNF it anyway. 
but I got it from NetGalley. I mean, here I am requesting this free copy of a, of a book that hasn't even released yet, and it just seemed wrong for me to DNF it. So I didn't, but it just, it was not, it was not for me. So I hate to end the video on, on kind of that low note, but such as it is, again, just my opinion. Other people have loved it. So if you, if you were looking forward to getting Darling Girls, maybe, you know, don't, don't let me turn you off. Um, but I do consider myself a huge Hepworth fan. So, hey, if I can say I did not enjoy a Charles Dickens book, it's not the end of the world that I can now say I did not enjoy a Sally Hepworth book. I, I still think so many of her books are worth reading if you're into kind of those um, like domestic mysteries. She just normally, she it, it's just, I enjoy her books so much. So this was a very different reading experience for me. We will leave it there. Let me know in the comments, have you read any of these books and what did you think? What's February reading going to look like for you? I mean, we have Black History Month. Um, we have Valentine's Day. Do I dare try a romance? Because if you've watched my channel for a while, you know I don't usually enjoy them. But do you have a romance, a love story book you think, ah, oh, Susan, I know you don't normally like contemporary romances. Like, I like romance, like Jane Austen romance. <laughs> It's the contemporary romance books I'd go and just roll my eyes till they're like rolling off the, in, you know, onto the floor. Um, but if you have a recommendation or a recommendation for Black History Month, I would love to hear uh, those in the comments. And I will leave the video here for today. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you again very soon. Bye.